So you wanna live van life, but you are either just too poor to buy a van or you are waiting for some life circumstances to change first. Like you're waiting for your kids to move out or you haven't brought your girlfriend around to the idea yet. This video is for you guys. Let's get into it. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars I swear stars. I'm not sponsored by them. This is six things you can do right now to get closer to starting van life. First of all, if you don't know why anyone would want to live in a van, I have a quick video listing 41 different reasons why anyone would benefit from life in a van. I'll link this below in the description and also in the pinned comment section below. Number one, the first thing you can do to get yourself closer to van life is add yourself to some Facebook groups. By adding yourself to a few different van life Facebook groups, you're changing your main Facebook feed into a dream board for van life. My main news feed constantly shows other vanners buying their next van, working on their builds, and various pictures of them living and traveling. This helped me three years ago when I was first looking to purchase my van because I could imagine myself in their shoes just like an actual dream board on my wall. With this, you can also see the struggles van lifers face, and you can visualize yourself in this life and imagine what it could be like for you, further putting you in a mindset to make this lifestyle work sooner rather than later. If you have a significant other who is on the border of wanting to do van life with you, you can get them to add themselves to a Facebook group and then they will get that daily propaganda towards your vision. Trust me, this works over time. Otherwise, it's probably just not meant to be. Break up with them. Just kidding, but you don't have to break up with them. Hmm. Some of you are procrastinating on starting van life because maybe you're scared you don't know how to build everything right now. If you are one of these procrastinators, understand this procrastination comes from confusion due to a lack of knowledge. A benefit of Facebook groups is that you can ask questions or search the group for answers to your questions that someone has asked already. Every time I personally ask a question in a van group, I almost always get 30 to 50 answers and 30 to 50 different viewpoints. This is especially helpful for finding those tips and tricks to use for the next project on the van build. Just think, the main hashtag Van Life Facebook group now has over 50,000 members. If you guys are stuck on your build, you have no excuse for lack of knowledge because we have something called YouTube videos to teach us what we do not know. While building my van, I would watch tons of YouTube videos on whatever thing I was currently working on, like the Max Air fan install. I would type in a search for other people's van roof fan installs and then watch about 10 of them to see all the different ways people did it. And then I would just use my judgment to put together a personal plan on how I was going to do my own. I did this for my fireplace, my sink, my stove, the floor, the ceiling, insulation, and so on. By watching many videos, you're getting a greater sense of what is right and what works. Number two, the next thing you can do to get closer to living the van life is to go to van life rallies. You can see other van lifers in the real world that are actually wanting to show off their builds. If you go to tinyhousedates.com, you get a calendar with dates of all the next van life rallies. And there are way more rallies close to you than you might think. All the rallies that I've personally been to have had like about 100 to 500 vans and buses each. Holy moly. A van or a bus rally typically dedicates a few days for guests to come and check out people's van builds. You pay like five to maybe $15 at most to get in as a guest. Then all the vanners are instructed to keep the doors open all day to show off their van builds while answering questions for you guys. I feel like these rallies are a really good excuse for you to travel, which brings me to my next point. Number three, the third idea I have for you, let's say you have a vehicle, but you are scared to leave your comfort zone behind. The point of this step is to get you comfortable with living in a vehicle. You can have any vehicle, whether it be an empty work van, something only partly built, or a normal everyday car. You might be scared to pull the trigger to start traveling aka leaving your comfort zone behind. I was too when I first started and I believe most people are. Solution though, you can 
use a van life rally as an excuse to travel. Leaving your comfort zone behind is easier if you schedule a day for it to happen. I repeat, it doesn't matter if you have a van or a car. Pay the money to get into the rally and camp overnight. Doing this will force you to travel somewhere else and camp for a few nights so you can test out your rig. But more importantly, test out your boondocking skills and get yourself accustomed to being okay with this lifestyle. I say this because it is a culture shock. Think of it like camping inside of a metal tent or a blanket fort for adults. Yay! The other big plus is that you'll be able to network with people actually living this way and ask them questions about their build so you can understand more about how to build your own. Number four. The fourth thing you can do to get closer to living in a van is sell everything you won't need when you're on the road. I'm going to tell you how I personally minimized all of my own clutter. When I first got the idea to van life, I was flat broke. I had zero dollars in my bank account. But just two months later, I had enough to buy my van. How you might ask? By selling every single thing I owned. I had just gotten out of the Navy maybe two years prior to this, and I still had my furniture, a car, music studio gear, and instruments from the apartment I had when I was in. I made a list on paper of everything I owned and then basically marked everything down I was willing to sell um, since I wouldn't need them anymore once I was living in a van. Think about this. You won't need most of your stuff lying around in your house once you're in your van because you won't ever use it again. If you can bring yourself to sell everything you own, you are going to feel so much better and more free afterwards too. Beforehand, I was so nostalgic about each instrument and furniture piece that I was selling. But remember, the nostalgia is up here. You're not giving away your memories. You're not selling your memories. You're selling the items to people who are going to continue to use them. Whereas if you kept them, you would just never use them again. You don't want your stuff going to waste. After you're done selling everything, you will feel so much better and lighter. It'll put you in a great position in life and lower your anxiety because now you have less stuff to worry about. Number five. The fifth thing you can do to get closer to van life is to start looking online for the prices of vans. For those two months between selling everything I owned and buying my van, I was looking online daily for used vans of all types, envisioning what the build inside would look like for each of the van models I was interested in. This step is some good goal building because you're going to find a van style that you really like, you're going to see the average prices for that van, and then you'll have something to work towards buying. So this in turn was going to push you to work harder to save money and sell all of everything you won't need. Well, I'm talking about the subject, you guys should know that there isn't any one best van for all people. All different people, all different vans. During this step also, you can download schematics of the van you're looking at and draw up build plans for what you want the finished van to look like. I honestly did all that in my head though, pretty much. Um, and I had this van planned out before I ever bought it. That's just who I am as a person. Most of my friends who are less visually oriented drew their plans on paper first so they can visualize it better. I do recommend that most people do it that way. Number six. The sixth thing you could do is to plan out a route of all the things you want to see. The excitement of van life can be a lie. For many of us, van life starts as a way to just survive outside of our workplace so we can save extra money. But that aside, everyone should engage in this step no matter how much money they have because it's going to be a great goal building exercise. So this step is all about looking up the different places you want to eventually go. Do some extra digging online and see what else is in those areas. My first trip to Florida was planned on a map with my buddy. You can watch that trip by clicking up uh, in the corner right here on that link. We planned to follow the coast most of the way down from North Carolina. Once in Florida, we went inland to visit many different Clearwater Springs, and thus, because of that, my love of freediving was born. 
I'm currently planning my next trip across the US. It won't be long before I will be making enough um, to just constantly travel. I've had some hiccups in my YouTube income lately, so I've reached out and gotten an online job I can travel with. Firstly, so I can buy some more camera gear so I can do some real estate videography on the road for that bigger money. If anyone is wondering where the future of this channel lies, just know I'm going through a transition period right now, and pretty soon there will be more high quality content, especially when I start my voyage across the US. And then again, when I buy my next van and convert that one into something even better than this current van. That one will be called Great White 2.0. <laughs> I never plan on quitting YouTube, uh, just so you guys know, unless things like really change big time. In fact, if you haven't noticed, my camera and audio have been upgraded. I'm now using a Sony a6400 to shoot with a much better powered mic for audio. Even though I have upgraded audio quality and video quality, I always plan on keeping my channel real for you guys. If you guys found this video helpful, please subscribe and maybe share this with someone you think it'll help. I've noticed my percentage of subscribers are really low for the amount of people who actually watch my content. Please, by subscribing and hitting that bell down below, this will help me out so much to keep producing high quality content for you guys on the regular. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.